All right, let's take a look at uh, making a simple wall with its UVs all set up to at least feel like it's tiling correctly. There's a lot of little things you would do differently for a game. For example, I'd probably delete the bottom plane, but for now, I just want to show you this simple procedure to get it to this point. So we have it really organized, and then we'll talk about how we would use scaling set of UVW, unwra unwrap UVW to make the tiling bigger on the, the final wall so we get more bricks. Tiling means the it multiplies how many times the texture repeats. Alright so let's just delete this real quick and we'll start from scratch and we'll go to box and I'll go to top view Z drag out a box. Since I'm using centimeters I want to use every 100 centimeters equals one meter. Every meter is three feet. So I'm going to say the wall should be maybe a three feet thick really. So, but let's just leave it three feet thick to make our lives easy. So we're going to say 100 centimeters thick. And then for height, we probably want to be quite a bit higher than that. Let's try 500 for width and 500 for height. Let's take a look at that. You know, probably let's do 1,000. Let's just make it a bigger wall. Keep it all in ones. There we go. So it's about a third of a foot thick. So I would call this a regular exterior wall, about three feet thick. That's about the thickness of a wall to your house. But nevertheless, then I'm going to come into my materials. In this case, we'll drop into materials, which is right here. We'll go to this one which brings up this viewport. Now inside of this material editor, and if I turn this on, you'll see this. I can pick what kind of material I want to use, or I can pick one that's already been used. For now, let's just go ahead and make a new material. So we're going to want a standard material for this time. I just click and drag it onto here. And the only thing I want to use, I'm going to turn this back off so we have more room, because this is where our, everything happens. I'm going to turn this off, and I'm going to take Diffuse. I'm going to click on that little dot right by Diffuse and select and then go to general and say bitmap because bitmap is any picture um, that we may have and then I'm going to navigate to the texture uh, here. brick which I attached to the homework and now I've got a texture on there if I double click on this you'll see this area in here which looks familiar from the compact material editor I just want to make sure I turn this up to 100 so I can see it from 100% uh, lit for now. Then I'm going to take this material, just like I did before, grab that and push this little assign material to selection button. Boom. And then I need to make it show up in the viewport. So I need to click on this little box that's surrounded this circle with the, the checkerboard on it. And then I'm done with this. That's all you need to do for this part of it. Okay. So if we look at this, it looks like it's good, but if we look at the sides and everything, it looks really, you know, weird looking. And that's because it's treated it like a box. And if you remember when we did a box last week, the box automatically fills up each area 100%. So the 1 to 0 to 1, 0 to 1, and the X and the Y is filled up completely with each of these planes separately. So let's put a UV unwrap on there real quick, and we'll come into the open editor here and I'm going to turn off this checkerboard in the back just so we can see our frames a little bit better. So if I grab any of these faces, if I'm in the poly, make sure I'm in the polygon mode and I click on this face, you'll see it's that height. And I click on this face, it's that height. And I click on this face, it's that height. So it's obviously incorrectly scaling these polygons and these planes. So what we can do is we can just grab everything like we've done before, go to tools, I'm sorry, mapping, flat mapping, and then I get the pop-up on my other screen, and then I'll just leave it default and say OK. And it's taken everything and put it into its own object here, like this, which is interesting. It didn't fix that one. Let me see something. There we go. I don't know why the first time I did it weird. Anyway, what it's done is it separated each of these faces, these polygons, into their own area, which is fine, which is kind of what we want. But you'll notice that even these now seem like they're correctly 
scaled correctly. So now they match the width of everything here. So really at this point, all we need to do is move these out of the way, move these out of the way, and come to this one, figure out which one we want to put here. I'm going to put one here and one here. It really doesn't matter because when we use that next tool, the stitch selected edge, then it's going to stitch that to the final piece that I have here. So what I'm going to do is go to edge mode, which is either two on your keyboard or up here. Then I'll click on this and you'll see it matches that one right there. And if I right click and say stitch to selected, it'll stitch it right up in there. And then I'll take this one and I will say stitch selected. And now I've got both of those pieces that are no longer up there, but they're stitched to this. And if we figure out which face I'm using, which would help, I'll take this one and you'll see now that they're stitched, they line up perfectly on these edges right here. So it goes across, perfect. That's because it's continuing the texture map that's in here. So let's take a look at this texture map in here real quick to see what it would look like. Instead of turning this on we, when we see this, we can also come into here and drop down and you'll see that there's texture checker, which is that other texture we talked about last uh, week. Or we can come down to the one right below that called map to brick PNG. It'll tell you the name of the texture you're using and the name of the map. I didn't name the name. Uh, I didn't name the maps at this point, but we will be doing that in the future just for this exercise. I'm not worried about it. So I'll click on that, and now that picture that I'm using is all right here in front of me. So I can see that if I move this over, I can see how it continues this texture across the edges of this piece right here. If I look right here, you'll see that it comes from here all the way over to there. So it's perfectly lined up because they're attached, makes sense. So let me turn it back off real quick. So to make follow that procedure, and I go back to edge mode, and I'll click on this one, and I'll say stitch selected. So there's a stitch, all of these together. Now, in theory, they should all kind of match. Now, what we might see is this edge and this edge, which are the opposite sides, not matching. Well. In theory, they don't match. I mean, look, this is gray and this is white, so they don't follow through. And look, and when we had gray, we followed gray. And when we had white or gray on this other one where they're all stitched together perfectly. But they don't follow through here. That's okay because they're still going horizontally. Now, these are the sides of the walls. These may never be seen. And if they are seen, then we take a little bit more uh, time on them. But for this purpose, I just wanted to go ahead and stitch the top one to this. So now that one's working fine, and this one almost works fine. Now we have problems in this direction, but that's fine. And then I'll take this one, oops, and I moved it, and I'll say stitch selected there. So now the bottom's all stitched up. So if I take this texture, and I make it work nicely inside of my my one-to-one -one area, inside of the UV unwrap, by doing the simple tool, pack UVW, and then saying do whatever you gotta do, snap it there. I can see that it's perfectly aligned, it fits perfectly well, but since this polygon is only this big, we're only gonna see one, two, three, four, five bricks across, or actually four and a half bricks across the edge here. If I turn my texture back on, you'll see that it's going one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four and a half edges this way too. So it matches exactly what we want. If we want to show what is really in here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bricks, then we need to do something else. So since these are all attached, I could now, when I scale the whole object, it will scale them all evenly, and they'll keep their positions compared to each other. The only ones we'll have problems still with is this top and bottom one, and this edge, and this edge may not match. But again, those are things we can deal with if we have to. So I'm going to scale this till it gets to just that center box. Let me zoom in here. I'm holding control and pulling on that outer border inside the UV unwrap texture controls here. And then scooting it over a little bit. Okay, so now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yay! So it's all set up and everything's perfect. If I look at the other side, we'll see the same thing. If I look up here, now we see it's two because if I turned on the show the other, you'll see now it's too thick and this one goes a little bit weird on the side. 
um, but it's one brick thick actually. But anyway, that's pretty cool. Now, what if I wanted this to be, let's say, you know, 20, 10 bricks is really big bricks. Um, so let's make it bigger. All I'd have to do is hold control so I'm uniform scaling with this tool and just scale it up. And I could scale it to my heart's content. Let's see, I'll scale it so it fits four of these boxes for the main edge here. More or less. And now I should have 10, 20, 30, or should have 20 across and 20 down, or I think there's more down, but there's 20 across now. So now as I scale this texture map, it will repeat this texture, and that's why we call it tiling, because it repeats this texture. But because it, this texture is what's called seamless, it enables us to see it perfectly lay up together. This is one of those tricks that we'll be talking about more and more as we get into texture maps. But the deal is, is that we want to have things seamless if we're going to be using for tiling. Or if we don't need them to tile, then the seamlessness doesn't matter. And the seamless just means that this automatically, if you look at this texture here, it works perfectly across all the boards. And a quick way to check a seamless texture is to go to Photoshop, open that texture up, and we'll see here's that texture. If I look at that texture in Photoshop, there's a filter. Well, let me see something first. What you need to know is the size of the texture. Now, it's not even a power of two texture, so it needs to be fixed for a final version, but we're not worried about that at this point. But it's 1,000 by 1,002. So I'm going to come to this filter menu, which gives me a bunch of options, but one of the cool ones is this other and offset. If I push offset, and I change it to half of it, so it's 500 by 501, we can see where if there is a tiling issue, it's only right here. All it does is it changes the way the texture is tiled. It moves it over however many spaces you say and down however many spaces you say, and now we can see that tile right there. So if we look carefully, we probably would see that in this texture right there. So this texture is not perfect. It's probably those two pixels that are too long on the bottom there. But anyway, so that's tiling and that's tiling textures. For your homework, I want this to be tiled four times. The main uh, scale to be four times the texture, so 20 across. And uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 40 down and 20 across. Okay, so because there's four of these, there's 10 and 20. So it's 20, 40, 10, 20. 20 across, 40 down. And that'll be your homework, part of your homework for this week.